Road again, we reserve it at Nesta, this is it? Close, Bob, no. Hi, I'm Bob Dog. And I'm Michael Dog. And this is the 10th anniversary of Mega Dog. Ten years on from its original incarnation, Michael and Bob Dog's cross-cultural, festival-inspired free-for-all has finally made it mega. The beat put on its waving shoes and hot-footed it down to London's Brixton Academy last month to talk about success, inspiration and its future, whilst trying not to mention the word crusty once. We used to go out places, Michael and I, and people wouldn't even let us in, you know, we, we looked too weird. Um, we'd turn up at bases and, you know, nobody would talk to you. I mean, you know, you're going out for a going out experience, and there wasn't one for people like us. So we wanted to set up something that was for, I suppose, the lame lowlights of this world who, who weren't part of the trendy kind of clubbing scene. Megadog's musical route sort of is really from sort of psychedelic kind of thing. We're, we're looking for something that is a little bit more cerebral than uh, maybe your straight ahead dance stuff, which is all stuff you can really only listen to in a club. We like the idea of music that you can listen to at home, in a car, in a club. It's kind of um, user-friendly, do, do you know what I mean? There's something more to it than just a beat-driven thing. I think because we're an honest kind of club, you know, and we try and ignore other people's, I mean, not audiences, but certainly the business kind of vibe about what people think we are. You know, we are who we are, and we do what we do. And if you want any proof in its success or viability, we're celebrating our 10th birthday. Not many people do that in this business. By operating a strictly anyone-can-come-in-door policy over the years, Bob Michael and their puppy posse have earned themselves a reputation as a crusty hangout for ageing hippies and young pretenders. We offered Bob the chance to set the record straight. It's a tragedy, isn't it, the kind of image that Megadog has, because the kind of people who come to Megadog is, is anyone and anybody. You know, it's, 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 it's not easy to say, oh, look, it's full of hippies or look, it's full of ravers. It's full of a lot of different people. We get tagged with this kind of crusty hippie thing sometimes because we actually let them in. I've been to a couple of other clubs in London where they have been a little bit kind of, well, mm. I love me you Juno, but like people here seem to be well found. People? Yeah. The absence of lager outs. No one wants to have to fight, everyone just wants to have a good time. You might say it's people who are the rejects of, of trendy club land, I suppose, but that's probably 90% of the population. It's good enough for me. Despite its phenomenal success and growing fan base, Mega Dog does have its critics who see it as a techno and drug feast with little to offer in the way of substance or attitude. Maybe you could say, oh, that's all about drugs, but I don't think so. I think Thatcher, the Thatcher years are really what, we are all the product of the Thatcher years. I think maybe that would be a better description of it, personally. Anyone who would see or choose to view our scene as having no substance to it um, has obviously not been to one of our shows or any of the shows working in this scene. I think it's a complete antidote to the uh, maybe the, the sort of empty-headedness of a lot of um, of the rock scene or, or the, the the indie scene maybe where it's just about let's go and get your rocks off now, which is fine and it's it's a thing to do and, and loads of people get into it, but not a lot of um, not, not, not a lot going on in people's heads with that. There's not any sort of message or any sort of vibe going with it. From a pokey pub in North London to two consecutive sellout nights at the Brixton Academy, where will Megadog go from here? In terms of, you know, our future, what are we going to do? You know, we want to work with all sorts of different people that, that will make us different, give us challenges. We're going out in November with Sabre Sonic doing a tour called the Sabre Tooth Dog. I mean, Andrew, Andrew Weatherall's kind of uh, comments on people like us are, are kind of well documented. I think it's going to be quite an interesting collision between an ex-punk and some ex-hippies, you know. Dance has gone through its huge upswell of popularity and everything. And now, you know, with Britpop and everything else going off now, people are looking for something different. And I think it's the energy aspect of a live performance that maybe the techno scene slightly lacks and will have to find to, to move on for the future.